Samsung's Galaxy Z Fold 7 is reportedly not just far thinner, but also a lot lighter than most regular phones. Apple is reportedly working on a new MacBook powered by even more iPhone guts than what we currently have. Samsung's one more thing for its next Galaxy Unpacked is clearly gearing up to be a bigger foldable. And yes, Google's Pixel 10 Pro series is finally getting the specs we've spent years asking for. I'm Jaime Rivera, and it's time to start this week with these four interesting topics. This is Tech Briefing, powered by MediaTek. I think the last time Apple gave us a sort of affordable MacBook was more than a decade ago, and yeah, the 12-inch MacBook just turned 10 this year. It seems the company is planning something new with the Mac, but by that, I mean never done before. The company is reportedly working on a new low-cost MacBook, and yes, you heard that right, and hey, apparently it's being powered by Apple's A18 Pro chip, the same one currently on the iPhone 16 Pro series. According to backend code uncovered by Mac rumors, the device is identified as Mac 17 comma one and marks the first time Apple would use an iPhone chip in a Mac, which in this case, yes, bears a ton of similarities with Apple's M4. Obviously the question left is what are we getting and for how much? Analyst Ming Chi Kuo adds that the MacBook will feature a 13 inches display and come in several color options, including silver, blue, pink, and yellow. While all Apple Silicon Macs so far are using M chips, the A18 Pro MacBook may signal a shift towards ultra-affordable Mac OS devices with lighter performance needs, as even the old M1 MacBook Air outclassed most Intel Macs on day one. And listen, currently we see the iPad mini running on the older A17 Pro, which is proof that even with far less RAM on the base, it's capable of running iPad OS without a problem and which surely could extend to the Mac. Mass production is expected to begin in late 2025 or early 2026, meaning this MacBook could launch in the first half of next year. Now we just wonder what this device will be called and listen, I would love for this to be a 12 inch MacBook refresh, even on that same chassis from 2015, but obviously less bezels for a lot larger display. I'm curious to know what you think in the comments. Now let's switch to Google as it seems the company is ready to finally give us Pro Pixels we've been asking for. A new leak from Android headlines hints to extra confirmation of some key changes we had heard about before and some new ones welcomed. First, yes, both the Pixel 10 Pro and Pixel 10 Pro XL will be powered by Google's new TSMC manufactured Tensor G5 chip and with 16 gigs of RAM. New is the possible one terabyte of Mac storage, which is great, but then we also hear the base storage is finally growing to 256 gigs, which seriously, what took them so long? Some speculate a price hike with this, but given how Samsung has been doing this for two generations of the Plus variant, I honestly doubt it. The battery packs are also getting a notable bump, with the Pixel 10 Pro housing a 4870 milliamp hour battery and the XL moving up to 5200, beating the Pixel 9a by a hair. These games may be supported by a new vapor chamber cooling system and slightly faster charging at 29 watts wired for the Pro, 39 watts for the Pro XL. Now, camera hardware apparently won't really change much aside from minor updates to the telephoto lens to allow more light intake. Seriously, if the company chooses to keep the current design, bringing on some new colors, listen, I'll be fine. What we needed was more horsepower, especially for longevity with that storage and endurance with that power pack. So I'm pretty happy with what I see, but I'm curious to know what you think about all this in the comments. Now let's switch to Samsung's Galaxy Unpacked in two segments, because right about now we know the company likes to tease new products at its event at the tail end. Apparently the company's long rumored tri-fold smartphone, potentially branded the Galaxy G Fold, is expected to make its debut along the Galaxy Z Fold 7 and Z Flip 7, which makes sense, though the theme might be different. We're expecting the regular Fold and Flip to make it into stores around early August, but the tri-fold might be a different story. I personally wasn't expecting for this device to be ready until next year, but reports have it we might see it in stores in early October. Pretty much the same strategy we saw from the company with the Galaxy S25 Edge launching much later compared to the rest of the Galaxy S series. Now, according to the leak from Sensua Digital, Samsung plans to tease or soft launch the trifold during the July event to generate buzz, but hold off on a full availability as it finalizes production and possibly gauges consumer response. 
While details are still scarce, the Galaxy Z Fold is expected to offer a tri-folding design, meaning significantly larger than any current Samsung foldable, extending beyond 10 inches diagonal. I'm actually wondering if this is a smart move given how reception for the Galaxy S25 Edge was good during the event, but then kind of died down after the launch because it took so long. I'm curious to know what you think about this in the comments. Now, before we get to the hottest news, let me tell you about today's sponsor, MediaTek. When you look at or try out the CMF Phone 2 Pro, the first thing you'll think is there is no way this phone costs just $279. The design is gorgeous. It has a triple camera system that's modular with optional accessories. It's got a great display, performance, and battery life, but what's really making it possible is the power of MediaTek's Dimensity 7300 Pro. Its four nanometer architecture enables support for great display quality, accelerated gaming, the latest forms of connectivity, Activity and top tier AI computing at a more aggressive price. It's the reason brands like nothing trust MediaTek for devices like these. Thanks to MediaTek for sponsoring this video. And finally, for the hottest news today, let's talk Galaxy Unpacked and the main product launches as more specs have started to emerge. According to Sensua Digital, a lot of the size rumors pretty much hold up with the Z Fold 7, but with an interesting twist. The dimensions remain the same at 4.2 millimeters when unfolded, 8.9 millimeters when folded. Thing is, we hadn't heard about the weight. At just 215 grams, believe it or not, this phone will be three grams lighter than the Galaxy S25 Ultra, and that's insane given the extra hardware. For context, it sheds nearly 15 grams from the Z Fold 6, which is crazy, and 10 grams when compared to the Oppo Find N5. Clearly, the company has learned a lot from the Galaxy S25 Edge and it being as light as the small Galaxy S25. We then have 8 inches diagonal on the internal panel with a better 10 megapixel camera, 6.5 inches on the cover, Snapdragon 8 Elite for Galaxy powering the show. Now, as for the Z Flip 7, it is said to be thinner at 13.7 millimeters when folded down from 14.9 on the flip six though apparently it gains an extra gram of weight at 128 total here's the thing though it makes sense given the larger 6.9 inch internal screen a larger 4.1 inch cover panel that's even bigger than what we have on the razor ultra and it seems both are peaking in brightness at 2600 nits another benefit is the larger 4300 milliamp hour battery and uh, bleaked images from Evan Blass show the thinner design along with vivid new colors. Now there still is a lot of back and forth on the price with some now claiming it'll retain the same one as before depending on the region. Regardless, in today's question let me know. If Samsung gave you a lighter Galaxy Z Fold 7 at the same price, would you buy it? Because in my case, that's my dream foldable. These are usually pretty hefty, so I would love easier handling, but I'm curious to know what you would prefer in the comments. Friends, thanks so much for joining on another episode of Tech Briefing. Please like, subscribe, and join the conversation in the comments as I'm sure you've seen I've tried to respond to as many as I can. Also, follow me on social media as there is a ton of behind the scenes happening with all these launches coming up. Our little company continues to grow, so we all really hope you like what you see. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one.